hey, y'all, creator of the T3 stack here. We're going to talk all about the worst parts of my stack. And I am so excited. Legitimately, I love all of the technologies that we've been recommending through things like Create T3 app, the videos on this channel, and just in general. I do love all of the tech we're going to be talking about today, but I want to emphasize we are not talking about the good parts today. So if this sounds really critical, you're taking it wrong. There's a lot of other videos where we talk all about the best parts of this stack, but today is not for that. Today is for where these things break down and what, in my opinion, are the worst parts of the T3 stack. So let's get started. One last general warning. There is so much good. We have full stack type safety, great scalability, a great horizontal scaling, good inter er, good standards with hot swap ability of parts, bleeding edge responsibly, and yeah, I think it's a good enough like quick rant about some of the good things, but I'm going to put these somewhere else because we don't care right now. We know what's good about the stack. We're just here to talk about the bad. You should still use it. Just please don't use it for a blog. What can't it do? Let's talk about it. Let's go through and first list the parts and where their strengths and weaknesses are. So I'll put in Prisma, Next.js. React verse, ah, uh, verse, yeah, Vercel can be in here. Tailwind, next auth. So let's go through each of these and talk a little bit about what is and isn't valuable in them. You know what? I'm going to take, I'm going to break this up slightly differently. We're going to do all of the Vercelian bits separate. And yes, I'm keeping next auth here because I think it is its own little thing. Oh, yeah, TRPC should be snuck in here too. That's a very good call. I'm dumb. So we have all of these things. What are the things that each of these are limited by? Prisma's first limitation is edge. It's slow. Prisma has a gigantic bundle size and includes a Rust binary that's not going to run on the edge. That is not going to give you the performance that we can get from an edge runtime. If you have a persistent server that has the Prisma client spin up once and sit there, it's going to perform just fine. But when you're using Prisma in a serverless environment, its edges start to show a little harder and the, the warts are not super easy to smooth out. They're working on the Prisma Cloud Proxy. It has a lot of promise, but it's not there just yet. So as of now, Prisma is one of the heaviest dependencies that affects your ability to run on the edge. Its cold starts are rough. It's, uh, how do I put this? Uh, very opinionated on node modules and in interacting with its parts. I'm just going to do very opinionated on node modules because Prisma overrides the node module as a build or as a npm install post install step to create the correct types. It's a little jank. It works, works fine, but with new solutions opting for a generated type file that you import from instead, it's not the best behavior and the standard with Prisma isn't to do that yet. If that starts to change and we see people using Prisma in a a more traditional sense with code gen, I could see this change. But even with that, code gen is a big deal. The fact that you have to generate types in order to use Prisma at all, much less in a type safe way, that is a barrier that something like TRPC doesn't have. TRPC is unique in that it doesn't need type gen. I think we're going to need some level of type gen for any SQL solution to be properly type safe. But it is one of the things that it uh, has problems with. So rather than what can't it do, I'm going to rename this to what are the issues. Edge continues to can't. Edge. Cold starts are rough. Very opinionated on node modules. Code gen necessary. And a more general, not the fastest thing. Especially when you have like big heavy queries or like nested stuff. Prisma is not the fastest way to resolve a query for sure. All of that said, Prisma is still a great solution. Still one of the best ways to work with a database in your TypeScript code. And they're working really hard to make things more performant. Let's hop into TRPC. TRPC is wonderful. It is really hard to beat when it comes to building a full stack app using TypeScript on the front end and the back end in a mono repo, but it does have its issues. Specifically, sucks outside of TS mono repos. If you want to use it for a third-party API, no, please don't. It's like very tightly knit for internal API usage for a front end and a back end that are very close together. I saw somebody calling TRPC tightly coupling your back end to your front end. 
they were saying it i think is a like an insult but i think it's a compliment it's very great how easily we can define the exact backend we need for our clients just by typing it and having the right stuff come out we just type on our keyboard the function we want and we call it on our client and everything in between is handled if those pieces are too far away that stops working so we could say like third party apis are rough uh non TS language is RF. Uh, the performance with lots of endpoints is limiting. When you have right now a couple hundred queries and mutations in a TypeScript or in a TRPC repo, the TypeScript server starts to slow down quite a bit. With V10, they made a lot of optimizations and you can do a few thousand now, but you'll still hit a point eventually where TRPC is pretty like rough in that sense. Uh, and I guess one more is support for clients outside of JS is not as consistent. There are clients for Svelte and Solid and uh, Vue all being made and worked on, but none of them are as far along as the React bindings because the React bindings are wrapping React query, which you could argue is one more thing. Uh, React version wraps React query. Yeah, I'd say those are a good summary of the like limitations of TRPC. And to be clear, none of these are problems for most projects, certainly the ones a lot of us will be working on. And by the time you start running into these problems, the offboarding path to get off of TRPC to the right solution for whatever problems you're running into, those paths are pretty good now. There's a lot of ways to start migrating off TRPC to something else because it is just functions. Uh, I should say uh, TS dev performance with lots of endpoints is limiting because people are getting confused about this one. Let's talk about Tailwind. I don't have much to say. Tailwind's pretty great. <laughs> need to parse all files that might use Tailwind classes. This can get rough for big code bases. It's not too rough. Uh, everything I've seen do it is really fast. You need to know or learn CSS. I consider this a positive. A lot of people wouldn't. They don't want to learn CSS. They just want to build. That's fine. Go use MUI. Don't come crying to me when it has nothing that you need. Yeah, Tailwind requires you to know some amount of CSS, but it's pretty hard to beat. I guess code splitting isn't really a thing. So like if you have three different pages that need different classes, all three of those pages classes are going to end up in one like CSS file. Usually those files are fine performance wise, but if you want the ultimate as little CSS down the wire as possible, Tailwind's not going to do that for the whole app. It's going to do that or it's not going to do that for individual pages. It's going to do that for the whole app. So the total of the CSS going down the wire is going to be really small. But for an individual page, it will not be as accurate as possible. Some people say inlining gets messy. I think that's an opinion less so than these things. I don't want to like dive into opinions on this too much. I want to dive into the realistic what you can and can't do. Yeah. Also, those people are wrong, but that's an aside. Next auth. This is one of the most limiting pieces. I, I hate to, to call it out so hard, but uh, it's too generic, but also too specific. It's bad. Things like it doesn't, I, I shouldn't say it's bad as in like the library is bad. The library is incredible and it's so important that we have something that does what it does, but it's really 50 50 on the, uh, yeah, it's really 50 50 on how much they prescribe opinions within it. Things like it doesn't have an ID for a user by default and it's really half baked on JWTs and it's not super clear how you can best use it because they're not trying to prescribe a best use case. They're trying to sol or solve for all use cases. I think there's a lot of room for a more minimal next off like thing that is much more prescriptive about how you work with it and a little more limited in the, the cases it works for. But next off can be a little annoying for in, in a general sense due to the philosophical approach they've taken with it. How this breaks down is things like uh, like some signet or work or getting user ID is annoying. <laughs> I like it, it's dumb. You can do it, but it is annoying that you have to, and you have to like think about it and figure that out. I'm quite frustrated about that. We do this for you in create T3 app, but we have to do that for you. Uh, type script story is a lot of overrides. You got to override the types that it gives you if you're going to use it properly. Uh, edge worker runtime is buggy at best. I've not gotten it to work at all yet, personally speaking. Uh, the use session doesn't have meaningful states. Always control flow 
of data is rough and sirens page props. Yeah, the page props pass throughs in the requirement to get server side props with a session fetching from their weird thing. Uh, and a general like you need to know a lot, a lot of next auth. There isn't really an alternative to it yet that isn't like externally hosting your auth, which I hate way more. You should own your auth and you should know a little bit about it. But this is a lot. It'd be cool. Oh, no easy way to refresh a token. That's a good one. Uh, token refresh is not really implemented. <laughs> I had to do that recently and it sucked. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of those types of things. I haven't seen anything better. Uh, I know Blitz is separating their auth package, but they're really heavy on credential auth. I, you know, it's it's not an opinion to put in a credential auth is rough. Uh, somebody mentioned uh, native and uh, yeah, React native support isn't there yet non react support is even further seeing people kind of get it working but we're we're a long distance away yeah you'll see uh next off is one of the more limiting pieces at the moment it is a great project the maintainers are working incredibly hard but i do think there's an opportunity now to make like a much more minimal next off that s you could even reuse their bindings but like next off light or something similar to that could be a very powerful package. Let's hop into Next.js. Next.js is great. Next.js has a lot of JS. So if you want to ship a very small bind or bundle, you're not. You can ship a kind of small bundle, but you can't ship a very small bundle. You also have to, you mostly have to buy into file-based routing. So you can bring your own router. Good luck SSRing with it meaningfully you're probably going to be using the file based routing if you're using next or next js uh you have to use their builder webpack swc so they recently moved from webpack to swc for most things but good luck getting Vite working in here bun is starting to get there but it's it's way too far to be a realistic use uh yeah we got a long ways to go before you can pick your own builder for next or for Next.js. I don't think you'll ever be able to. I don't think other frameworks are aiming for that either. But in a world where Vite is really cool, it is a little disappointing that we don't have Vite support in Next.js. Uh, React is pretty mandatory. Not 100% mandatory, but good luck using Next.js without React. I've tried. You can. It's rough. Uh, data loading patterns are i'm just gonna say it they're trash they're really bad uh get server side props was so valuable when it happened and it is very dated now <laughs> it's not great uh the result is that we're not even using them in create t3 app we'll, we'll get to that in a bit because I, I should make a separate section for our opinions that have problems but for now, data loading patterns are trash. Edge support is really early. And I mean really early. It breaks in ways I do not understand and cannot recommend using it just yet. What are some other next problems? General data flow is rough. A data flow. I know I said data loading patterns are trash, but the data flow as a whole is pretty tough. Uh, data flows are a lot to understand and or I just did say that flows are unintuitive and limited page props in particular. I'll just say page props. Uh, a lot of my complaints are being resolved, which I should be clear about. Like next image was trash. The new version seems a lot better. Most next imports are kind of cursed. I think that's a fair summary. Pretty much everything I've imported from next slash other than even the head components a little cursed at times. Yeah, whenever I import from next Things are a little cursed. Use router sucks at query params. I'm going to stop calling them query params and start calling them URL search params when I'm making content. Query params is the right term, but they've been hijacked, so I can't say them at that anymore. Fun fact, if you don't know this, when you use, use router to get query params, they will be undefined on the first render, pretty much no matter what you do. Very, very painful, <laughs> but solvable-ish, just dumb. Anyways, I think that's enough of uh, Next.js complaints for now. Still a great framework, still what I use for almost all of my apps. But if you're not building an app, Next.js might not be the best thing. For more staticky experiences, it can be a little bit rough. Let's talk about our favorite, React. Not good for static. It just isn't. If your site is mostly static, React's a lot to load. It, it the, like React takes the entire DOM and throws it into a virtual DOM so that it can synchronize JavaScript land with the actual page you're seeing. 
as effectively as possible. That's not every page. If your page is majority static or almost entirely static, good luck. React's gonna require you to load a lot more than you need to. It's not gonna be super slow, but it's not gonna be as fast as it can be and you are loading more JavaScript than you need to. Uh, React doesn't prescribe much, or it doesn't prescribe data, styles, routing, or much. I would argue that this is a good thing and I don't want it to be like, I don't want to break my opinions rule, but there are teams where that's not acceptable. Like I could even put this as a separate point. Uh, React's solution space is absurdly large. So there's a lot of ver variety in how you can solve a problem with React, which a lot of teams, code bases and companies cannot live on top of. They, it's just, it's not realistic for them. They want everything to be as consistent as possible so they can switch out the team with people entirely new. And in those situations, Angular, Sure, fine. I don't think those are situations are particularly common, and I much prefer the flexibility that React gives my developers to solve a problem as best as they can. But in systems where things are very consistent and they want them to stay very consistent, React does not provide a very consistent solution space. More innovation, more opportunity for optimization, but less consistency overall. I also think, I saw the docs coming up, uh, the beta docs are incredible, like significant level up in developer education resources, period. Like some of the best in the world. So proud of what's going on with uh, the new docs efforts, but they're not localized yet. And I can say generally uh, non-English support comms, et cetera, is lagging behind English. I think that's true for almost everything in here, to be fair, but React big enough that it would be cool if the beta docs were or were already localized. I get why they want to finish them first, but it does suck for people who don't speak English as their primary language to adopt something that is so far behind in their language or in their primary language. Whereas something like Vue is incredibly global with their localization, with the effort they put in to keep the documentation in all of their communities and such as diverse in everything, especially language as possible, React's lagging behind in that regard. And these are all very realistic reasons to not use React. I can totally understand why anybody would pick one of these reasons. I'd wanna hear more about why they think their developers shouldn't have agency. But if you don't want your developers to have agency, I can even say like too much agency. I think it's a good thing. I can see why people wouldn't. Let's hop into Vercel. Vercel is great. I do love Vercel. It is a phenomenal platform. Vercel is opinionated about how you deploy things. Uh, the first big thing to know about Vercel is stateless. Vercel is entirely stateless. So you need to figure out your database solution somehow. You need to figure out your caching solution. Eh, not too much so, Vercel is a good job of caching, but state-wise, nothing. You're not storing things in Vercel. And even the cache, if you push a new build, cache gets wiped out. Probably a good thing, not a reliable store. There's no way to reliably store th something in Vercel other than to put it in your Git repo, which is not realistic for a lot of people. Uh, it's also serverless, which means that you will be eating cold starts if you're not going edge. So you could argue like Vercel edge and Vercel non-edge are almost like two very different products. I could even say Vercel Lambda, because right now you have to use Vercel Lambda if you're using the T3 stack as Create T3 app sets it up, but that's... Uh, just the world that it is in by default. So stateless, serverless, rough cold starts. Multi-region is rough. They might have that in the enterprise plan. They don't have anything realistic for pro peers to do multi-region outside of Edge. Uh, Edge is early. Uh, next JS is definitely, or next JS is still happiest path. I've been surprised how quickly other things are catching up, but nothing is supported as well as Next consistently. And I've definitely had frustrations when using something like Astro and it's not as well supported, just being realistic. Uh, uh, pricing for some things can scale weird, like the image optimization stuff scales really weird. Uh, invocations can scale kind of weird. People keep saying WebSocket. I already put serverless in here. That means you can't do WebSockets. Like that, that's implicit in it being serverless. I'm trying to think there's anything else here that I really want to emphasize. Uh, I think this is fine. It, like Vercel is the easiest way to deploy a Lambda and it's quickly becoming the easiest way to deploy on Edge. And it's integration with like having a CDN with reasonable behavior built in is still best in class. There is not much that I wish Vercel did that it doesn't do. I'm pretty happy with the state of, like of all of these things, I would say Vercel and Tailwind are the two I am by far happiest with. There is not a database solution as part of T3 stack. Anything SQL is fine as part of T3 stack. I like PlanetScale a lot. I use them a lot. I like Railway a lot. I use them a lot, but 
I don't prescribe a specific solution as part of T3 stack. These are the parts that are very much like directly associated. Yeah. Now let's do the opinions, T3 opinions with rough edges. We're gonna talk about the things that the T3 stack specifically has opinions on that work well for the apps that we're building for that might not work well for your app. One of those things is the modularity. We touched on this a little bit before, but there's a lot of space between the parts that the T3 stack prescribes and a lot of flexibility in each piece. You can do a lot with those pieces and you can do a lot of things that probably aren't great. I've seen some scary code in the Discord and I've seen some code I never would have written. That's probably fine in the Discord as well. Shout out to the Discord, t3.gg slash Discord. Join if you haven't already. Really awesome community. The Discord community has shown me all sorts of cool ways I would never have thought of using Next and using the T3 stack that vary a lot in how much I would like to see them in the future. See a lot of blogs, which I'm not as fond of. Like this is not a stack for building a blog. A blog is a mostly static experience and you should use a mostly static solution if you can. But then I see it used like being deployed on servers directly through Fly, used on top of distributed databases, all these other cool things I never would have thought to do that work really well. But that modularity means the developers have a lot of agency and they have a lot of opportunity to make decisions that aren't ideal. And that's a thing you have to be considerate of when you adopt this stack is how well do our developers understand these parts and how well are they going to adopt them as they continue building an increasingly large app. I'm gonna get my cat quick, he's screaming at the door. Cat break. Cat break. Hi, bud. Anyways, back at it. So the modularity means that we make assumptions and your developers have to be good enough to work around those assumptions. And also the ones we don't make, they need to be able to make good decisions about them. Uh, other argument with this is a, there's a lot of pieces to learn. And that's uh, not like the direct point here, so put in parentheses, but there's a lot of parts. I think those parts are way simpler then the things you have to learn in competing all in one solutions, but you have to learn like TRPC implies React query. So you have to understand React query. Uh, Next.js implies a whole bunch of server rendering, file rendering type stuff that you have to learn as well. React, if you don't already know React, you need to use that and learn it decently well. You have to be very familiar with TypeScript or willing to get familiar with TypeScript. There are a lot of pieces I don't think you need to learn more about any one of those pieces than you would have about other technologies in the past. But I do think that it is intimidating to see the long list of parts and have to learn each one. If you just got out of learning HTML and it took you a year, but that's kind of part of how the stack is built. The goal isn't to make you an expert in each part. It's to give you parts that let you move as fast as possible and learn what you need to as fast as possible as well. I think each piece is simple to learn. And when you see how they work together, they make much more sense. But if you just go and force yourself to read every single doc for every part in the stack, you're not gonna have a good time. It's a lot of pieces. And you need to know enough about those pieces. Uh, I just actually put, yeah, I'll do that. Not for everyone. A lot of pieces seems like a lot or intimidating to learn. Uh, let's see, what other opinions? Uh, unit testing, I'll say testing. We took no stance. So now your devs might pick poorly. I don't want to dive too deep into whether or not you do or don't need testing and what ways to do it. Testing is absolute chaos right now. Everybody has their own opinions and will fight on them. I don't care enough. So we didn't prescribe a solution for it. But that also means whoever picks the stack that then decides they want to add testing and pick whatever they want and they can pick something awful. I'm sorry if you do. It might've been valuable for us to include a good testing solution but I, we don't, we chose not to. It's, that's a problem for you to solve. And that is something that people might be upset about. Like a, a rails killer needs to have testing built in. We're not trying to build a rails killer. 
we don't care enough about testing to build it in. Sorry. I'll say uh, SSR and get server side props. Uh, we don't fetch data on first paint. The default implementation of create T3 app when you are fetching data from the server does not include that on the first paint of the app. There's a lot of reasons for this, specifically blocking the bytes of blocking data from the server to the client on a cold start is a really rough experience. We kind of saw it with the roundest earlier, except what we saw was a loading screen with the flashing loader. If I uh, roundest.t3, you'll see it had that loading spinner. That loading spinner came down in the original HTML from the server. If I go in here, and I go to network, refresh, and we take a look at the HTML we get from the server here. This HTML does not include the Pokemon that you're voting on. It has the rings image. This is the loading image. This is what the server gives us, even though the actual DOM has different stuff in it. That contrast is because if we preloaded via get server side props with two random numbers, the numbers that this got would be wrong unless we page props it. And if we page props it, we lose type safety. So we don't use get server side props, which means the HTML that comes down from the server is not fully correct HTML with all of the data. Instead, the user gets a loading state before the data comes through. I think for applications in particular, this is probably optimal because you can show the user a loading state rather than letting the browser show them whatever the browser wants to when it's blocking, which is usually a sad little blue loading bar at the top and possibly even a white screen when it does it or a stale version of the current screen. This is to an extent the single page app versus multi-page app argument, but with Next, you're still able to embed metadata. Let's say you want this page to have different metadata depending on like what weak it is. You could load different metadata on the server and cache it via get server side props. It's a little messy, but you can. But by default, none of that exists. And if you wanted to, let's say, use TRPC to get metadata that you embed in the head for like SEO, our implementation of TRPC is not going to do that for you. And if you turn on SSR and TRPC, it's going to break a bunch of weird stuff because of these edge cases around SSR. So all of that said, we effectively don't SSR in the traditional sense. We generate pages and then or fill the data on client with loading states and all of that pretty traditionally. But you do have to understand that going in. This is another part of why like for a blog or an e-commerce site, this might not be the best stack. Probably isn't by default. But if you work around these things and build better data paths or just wait for next to figure their stuff out, these things will improve. But for now, if you really want the HTML coming down the wire to be fully correct with all of the right data that you're fetching from database, first raw, or first pass, this stack's not going to do that for you. And if it did, it would block for upwards of three seconds when it does it, which is far from an ideal experience. I stopped giving him attention right after being upset that I was giving him attention, like the smart boy he is. He loves like I love you, bud. Calm down. Just another day of cat dadding. Anyways, yeah. We don't SSR, which means you're going to get a flash of incorrect content of a loading state or something like that. Is it, I could say like, I think SPA plus plus is how I would describe our opinion here. We're a single page app with really good loading paths, with really good data fetching, with really good behaviors, but we are SPA first. We don't help with GSSP at all. Let's see, 100% TS type script and type safe. What are the issues here? Uh, databases might not be type safe. If you're using Mongo or something, you're going to have to write some lies somewhere. And where you put those lies can increase in pain of the output. But you have to be considerate of that going in. Like, can you use Prisma? And can you use something or can you use something like Prisma as a type safe layer between your database and your client and your like code? Nice. Awesome. Otherwise, yeah, it, it can be rough. What else? 
uh okay so 100 typescript yeah database might not be type safe that can be rough uh typescript perf for large code bases is a thing or so yeah just is a thing <laughs> uh if you have lots of TypeScript in your code base and lots of like inference, lots of type definitions and like interfaces being combined and shit, it can be rough. It can be pretty rough. I know there's solutions like building good project references throughout your code base that will generate like inferred d.ts files to keep your performance from getting bad. But if you have like tens of thousands of TypeScript files in a code base and nobody has taken the time to do those optimizations, performance can get pretty bad. I see Matt in chat, Matt Pokrick, who's TypeScript wizard, saying it's worth it. I absolutely agree, but this is a thing you need to be considerate of. Your editor might not be the might not move this move as fast as it can in other languages because of how much more work it has to do to understand the system that you're working within. And things like TRPC can speed up the point at which you get to those bad performance like situations. I would also argue that the server runtime perf isn't optimal probably fine especially because of the nature of lambda functions and how horizontally scalable they are but yeah i words are hard uh yeah i guess it's not typescript more i, I this is like three parts i'll say like, like typescript has problems the typescript problem here i'd say is the typescript perf for large code bases uh say typescript dev perf for large code bases the type safe is the database thing. And then the, the JavaScript underneath is this thing. So this is a problem because of the type safety. This is a problem because of the TypeScript. And this is a problem because of the JavaScript. All of these are things that are worth working around for a lot of people a lot of the time. But if you want to minimize the runtime performance on that backend to make every millisecond as optimal as possible, JavaScript's probably not going to do that for you. That doesn't mean it will scale better. It means it will resolve faster. Scalability is still an infer problem. You have to worry about like when this server is hit, does a new server come up to handle the next request? Like how do you handle a server being saturated? And Lambdas through the Vercel stuff that we recommend through serverless handles that part for you. So now we're just left with the performance of the server runtime itself, which yeah, we can resolve a page slightly faster. We can resolve some data slightly faster in another language. But the client's going to be running the JavaScript anyways, so it ends up not being as big of a deal for a lot of places. That said, if you're at the point where you want to squeeze every ounce of perf out of every server you run, JS isn't going to do that for you. What other rough opinions do we have? I think we're covering most of the like big ones. The learning curve for the stack uh, Matt asked about, I'd say it's pretty small. I touched on that a bit above. It's a lot of pieces. So your learning curve is going to depend a lot on how much you know about any of these pieces already. Like if it's, if we're comparing somebody who is getting into JavaScript, or who's never programmed before, getting into T3 stack versus Rails, I think Rails might be slightly easier. But if we're comparing somebody who's a React developer going into like a next GraphQL code base versus going into T3 stack, they will move way faster in T3 stack, especially if they've already used React query, especially if they're kind of familiar with TypeScript. But due to that nature of being multiple parts, the learning curve feels more intimidating, but it isn't. You really need to dive in and start building with it, I think. And then you'll see the parts you don't know. I'd say the biggest like pitfall I've seen is people go to the TRPC docs when they're looking for the React query docs. They don't intuit that the use query and use mutation, the things they're doing with that are React query concepts. So they don't make that extra step. Beyond that, doesn't really matter. I would say that our learning curve is better than most. Somebody mentioned they picked it up over the weekend with a as a React plus Rails dev, which is super cool to hear. We're intentionally pretty minimal on docs. We have a big overhaul coming soon. I almost want to tease that on stream. It's it's tempting to tease that. But uh, yeah, we have a good readme. We, uh, I could say docs. We don't have much. Blog posts are good, vids are good, but arguably not enough. We defer to docs for depths a lot. So if you want a framework or a stack that is really well documented, show it to me first, especially the stack. I've never seen a well-documented stack in my life. If there's like a mean stack page that does a good job of breaking it down and teaching it to you, I'd love to see it. But part of being a stack, not a framework, 
is that it's not our responsibility to document it as much. You might not like that opinion, which I can understand, but the documenting it way too much is... Yeah, over-documenting is definitely a problem that I've seen in these things. And I want to make sure we can still move fast and not have to... Like, when TRPC v10 ships, that's going to be a huge overhaul of the API for TRPC. So if we heavily document how to use TRPC right now, you're screwed coming up. So I think we're in a, a pretty good spot overall. Yeah. But I could see why somebody would disagree with that. Yeah. I think I've covered the opinions I would say of ours that have the most rough of edges. I, I really want to emphasize that this stack is not for every project and not for everything. I've actually been using it less on projects recently because I'm doing more staticky stuff, like the faster round thing I just showed, like a lot of the benchmarking I've been doing. But as soon as I'm making an app, a thing where data changes regularly and you're keeping the page open for minutes, if not hours at a time and interacting with it, I always reach for the stack because it is the fastest way to build a full stack solution and scale that solution as well. I, I truly believe that. I have had so much more pleasant in experience with the stack than anything I've worked with before. And I cannot recommend it enough, even if just for those reasons. So I hope that this is helpful for y'all. I hope you understand that when I recommend the stack, I'm not telling you to go burn down your blog and rewrite it in Next. I just like these technologies. And I think that they help build applications much faster. Try it out if you haven't already. Shout out to Create T3 app. Definitely check that out, create.t3.gg. And if you're not already in the Discord, please join. It's where we talk about all these things. It's where this like stack and framework and all started. Really proud of what we've been building. Really proud of the things people have been building on top of it. And obviously, I'm really proud of what we built at ping.gg, all using this stack too. It is a great way to build, but I want to make sure we're straightforward with the limitations of the technologies that we're recommending because it is a big, bold, and scary thing to adapt a stack like this. So if you're trying to convince your workplace to adopt T3 stack, watch this video. Make sure that you fall in a reasonable place with all the limitations that I've documented here. And then bring this to the team as a supporting piece of evidence. If the things we talked about here are not problems for the things that you are building, this is the best stack to build with by a lot. But if you do have problems that these limitations will emphasize, use whatever's best for that. Hope that this was a helpful video. Leave a comment if you learned something or are excited to try the stack or even crazier if you're going to move off of it because you realize you adopted it somewhere you shouldn't have. Love to hear from the community and all the cool things you guys are doing with the stack. Leave a comment below if you can. Really appreciate it.